Hello, a message from your friendly neighbourhood editor whose voice has somewhat gone, so if I sound scratchy throughout my miscellaneous appearances, that's why. In the following podcast, there are discussions of weird medical events and weird injuries. Nothing too graphic, but if the idea of this makes you uncomfortable, this may be one you want to skip. Thank you very much, and enjoy the episode, everyone. I, we, we, sh- we should call it a, a wintro. Because <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> that's awful. Right, yeah, let's do that's, a wintro. That's god awful. <clears throat> let's. Hi, I'm Winter. And I'm STXY. And this is... Definitely a podcast. Only t- took us two tries. Three tries. Yeah. Awesome. Too many tries. Um, it is and scary. We would like yeah. Should we to... should we try some funny shtick that we can do? We should have the we have the base intro right, and then we can like change it. How about we wrap based... it? What? How about we wrap it? You know what? Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that. What? <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. I haven't. How about left. we I've wrap been, I, it? I thought you meant like wrap, like wrapping paper. No, I <laughs> don't mean. No, what? <laughs> Look, I've been staying. I stayed up. I've stayed up to five a.m. the past three nights. You can't say shit to me. Actually, I can. I've stayed up till four a.m. the past three nights. You see how that number is smaller than the one I said? But those aren't the only nights I've stayed up till 4am. I have made a point of having an awful sleep schedule. More awful than usual for the duration of this holiday. Yeah. Yeah. I- my first day of school is on Thursday. So I'm just getting it all in while I can. Oh my god, that's- What about you? Uh, like, to, the day after tomorrow week. The so Wednesday week. That thing, yeah. 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 I mean, it's technically not, like, my first day of school. It's like, we're getting our lockers and stuff. Ah, right. Are you going to yeah. have lessons? I don't think so. We're going to be, like, shown our classes and probably, like, say hi to whatever teachers we're going to have this year, but... No actual lessons. Okay, right. What year are you guys in again? Sticks, what year are you, what year are we guys in again? I'm going into fifth year because I didn't do T Y. Oh my Christ! Just to give a little bit of context so the following makes sense for any of our non-Irish viewers, T Y stands for transition year, which is an optional year you can take in Irish education. It's essentially a year where you don't have traditional exams and lessons, you instead do more practical things such as work experience, driving lessons, etc etc to get you prepared for adult life and take a break before 5th and 6th year which is the equivalent of the final years of our secondary school system. Thanks for hurting my brain. Uh, Yeah, actually. That is... I didn't want to skip TY. I'm... I genuinely didn't want to, and I was very You're upset. You're just goofy like that. But stuff happened. All my friends Bro, you should just... are doing TY. All my friends have been accepted into TY, except for the weird ones that I don't actually know. It's wait, you have you have you can get rejected from TY. Um, that okay. Long story, but I'm gonna tell it anyway. Our school is very small. Each, the average size for each year is probably about 40 kids. There's, I think, 300 in total because some years are big. But that means there's only 30 spaces. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, there are 60 people in my third year. 40 of them wants to do TY. Yeah. No, 45 of them. 30, there are 30 spaces in TY and four of them are taken up by exchange. So 20 people got rejected. Um, so, a little under wow. half the people got rejected. They were they weren't looking for people who would make it in. They were looking for 
people who they could kick out. It's irritating wow. and disappointing, but that sucks. That that what? That sucks. Yeah, and it has it has spots in my school, Kira, because the small school. You live in the the deep dark uh, death. Do you? I do. Yeah, in an awful town. Well, not in an awful. Town. I go to school in an awful town. That's like the people there are all eighty percent cocaine. Well, they're either eighty percent cocaine look, or mean? under that the age of six. Makes it good. I'm not the sure it does. Thing makes it good. I'm it not does. sure. Guys, it does back me up good. here. There's like a lot of stuff that's happened because of that. That isn't very pleasant. That's fair. Not directly to me, but it's happened to. Me. Any of my friends, one, yeah, it's not very cash money. There was a long break here with a lot of off topic discussion. Trust me, it's best we just skip it. And introducing our guest for this week. Have Emily. we done an actual Woo! intro to the episode? Hello. We did, Hello. yeah. Oh. We did. I hope. Okay. If not, a bit late now. Should we, should we make sure? No, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure we did. But just, just to be safe, we did an intro. Kira, can you confirm that? Yeah, we did an okay. intro. Right. When you shut up? Okay, I will not speak for the rest of the episode. I just opened my thirty-five cent water and it started smoking. <sighs> I think I'm gonna close that for the time being. Yeah. Also, the, the 35 cent water is the most comical thing I have ever heard of. It's a, it's a running rabbits. gag with me. Yeah. Every episode I just crack open a cold one, You're... but it's 35 <laughs> cent water. Yeah. One of the other best things I've ever heard of... Um, my, my friend once sent me this image there's a bunch of aliens standing around like a guy on a stretcher and the caption is cracking yeah. open a cold boy with the wand. <laughs> it's just so <laughs> fucking perfect. Cracking open a oh cold God. boy with the ones. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I finished Girl Boss Goat, by the way. I will send her your way. Mmm. Yay. So, Amelie, what would you was like... that sound? That was me. Mmm. Amelie. Never do you, it again. Would you like Amelie? Hello. Would you like to introduce the topic at hand? Uh last thing I checked with you, we were going to discuss unusual and bizarre historical events. Yes. Yeah. So I like it, yeah. but I don't know much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I will figure something out. Um, uh, I was I've got... informed by my father when I asked for interesting history facts that a uh, hundred years ago today, I think he said uh, Michael Collins was executed. I think. Well, not really like know, executed. It's not like they rounded him up and like took him out to a hut in the back to shoot him. But yeah, he died. Yeah. He just died, and there were soldiers there. Sad, sad boy hours. And a chunk of lead in his head. Yeah, you get it. Um... Right, what... Amelie, do you have any interesting things that you've compiled? Uh, no, because I figured it was, like, the host's job, but, yeah. I do have a couple things. Go on, then. Right, Google, here I come. I... One of them I've spoken about before on the podcast, in episode three. Sticks, can you guess what this is? I'm struggling to remember which one episode 3 was. The game show with Lexi and Jake. And then we did Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, but, but that didn't make it in. Uh, yeah, um, the the molasses flood thing. Exactly. Oh, that was weird. The Boston the... Molassacre. Boston Molassacre. <laughs> or as I like to call it, the Boston Molassacre. You exactly just stole that, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not even the first person to say that anyway. It's yeah. all good. Yeah. I'm just wondering, is my audio okay? 
Yeah, it's okay. Oh yeah, your audio Sorry. is great. Yeah. Better than Winter's. I am in a foreign house, and as we all know. Yeah. No, your audio is just always horrible. This is not true, and I don't like you for saying that. <clears throat> oh, I don't appreciate you saying that. Okay. I don't appreciate right. your unappreciation. Right, let's, let's get... Right, let's get... Let's... Let's do that. Let's get to Dylan. Okay. So, the Boston Molasses Flood, the Molassica, was 103 years ago on January 15th, 1919. Time was approximately 12.30pm. The location was Boston, Massachusetts. I'm reading this off of, off the Wikipedia page. The coordinates... <laughs> <laughs> 42 degrees, 22 seconds, 0, 22 minutes, 0. 0. 0.06.6 seconds north, something west, I'm not going to read that, cause cylinder stress failure, deaths 21, non-fatal injuries 150 people injured, I never knew molasses would be so badass. <laughs> yeah. Those are some fairly nerdy molasses. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Google. Uh, I googled, and the first article I found was that one time, uh, like it was like a list of stuff, and once, Na Mr. Napoleon Man, uh, rounded up about had had his people round up three thousand rabbits for a rabbit hunt, and they attacked him. And that's why he was scared of small animals. Actually, I have a, I have an unusual historical event to share. Okay. Uh oh. Uh, the Tullamore balloon crash, like the hot air balloon crash, it was the first like aviating disaster in history on the tenth of May, seventeen eighty-five, in Tullamore County, Offaly. Shit. Uh -huh. And it like burned down more than a hundred homes. Not bad. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's probably like. The, the biggest thing to come out of Offaly other than Barack Obama Plaza. Offaly is one of the things about Ireland that no one seems to know. The cursed in county. The 18, yeah. In the 1830s, it's the same article, ketchup was sold as a medicine in the 1830s. Did they even have the letter K back then? Yes. Yes? Oh. Bro! I thought they didn't have a letter K. You're so weird. Um, the Boston. All the... of these oh, items just... are about America. Ew. This is I'm all just look... common misconceptions. We did this mm -hmm. last time. Yeah. We did this also in episode 3. Yeah. Um, let us see what more. There is about the Boston Molasses disaster. Mm -hmm. uh, it occurred at the Purity Distilling Company. True fact, that's really applicable information. Cool. First to the scene were 116 oh. cadets under the direction of Lieutenant Commander H.J. Copeland from the USS Nantucket, a training ship of the Massachusetts Nautical School, now the Massachusetts Mar Maritime Academy, that was docked nearby at the, at the playground pier. The Cadets ran several blocks toward the, towards the accident and entered into the knee-deep flood of molasses to pull out the survivors, while others worked to keep curious onlookers from getting in the way of the rescuers. Boston Police, Red Cross, Army, and Navy personnel soon arrived. Some nurses from the Red Cross dived into the molasses while... Why? Why would... Okay. Ooh. Uh, from that what? Sam Onella video about the non-water floods, there was, I believe, a whiskey flood in Dublin, and oh, yeah, there was... people died trying to drink it. Because they got, like, alcohol Nobody tried to get away. Yeah, nobody tried to get away. Nobody also, no, all of the deaths Ireland. were <laughs> All of the deaths... They weren't al uh, there was alcohol. None of them were from drowning. Uh, but they were alcohol poisoning and just other types of poisoning from, like, stuff that got into the whiskey from, you I know, swear the streets to of Dublin. We are uh -huh. a hopeless <laughs> race. I mean, yeah, I think it was Guinness, so, you know. Ah, right. Yeah, that explains it. 
I yeah, would. I'd watch the I same would. sound <laughs> another video. <laughs> As a person who drinks wow. a lot of alcohol, um, you have all I would absolutely. I believe you. Yeah, absolutely, all of the time. I'm such an alcohol person. Mm. I'm pretty sure that's the word, right? Alcoholic. You're an alcoholic. Oh yeah, that thing. I'm I'm one of that. <laughs> That's just such a comical thing to say, even for me. Me. You're making yourself other. sound like somebody who's never had alcohol before now. Yeah, exactly. Probably because I am. Had alcohol, from, you know, but literally it just was dipping gross. my finger in the wine glass as a wee lad. <gasps> okay, so President what? What did Zachary you do? Taylor. Uh, no, because it's from a different list with, with a lot of the same ones. Um. President Zachary Taylor, uh, a human American te- president, I don't know their names, uh, died from a cherry overdose. He ate too many cherries and drank a lot of milk at a 4th of July party in 1850 and died on July 9th from gastroenteritis. I've had I gastroenteritis that just on my book. birthday. It sucked. No, it's. Mm, like, I've had really. gastroenteritis as well. I find it hilarious. This mad lad dies from the mad lad died from yeah. cherries and milk. Speaking of overdosing, I've had stomach. Uh, yeah, I've heard of a a guy who overdosed on licorice. Like you know, the YouTuber <laughs> Chubby Emu. I bet it was the gro- my best. I bet it was the gross black kind too. Yeah, it's like yeah. a man I ate two pounds much. of licorice in a day. Oh. This is what happened to his brain. You know those kind of videos. His brain? So this fella was just eating it. So basically this guy, like, uh... His he was addicted brain? to, like, heroin or something. And he finally kicked the heroin habit. And then he just replaced it with sweets. And he ate copious amounts of sweets. And one day he decided he'd give licorice a try. And he was eating, like, two pounds of licorice a day. I don't know what that is in, like, kilograms. Anyway, he's eating a lot of licorice. And, uh, yeah. He got off heroin. But he overdosed on licorice. And died. Can you imagine? I mm-hmm. cannot. This is one of the few things that I cannot make my head think about. Pretty funny, though. It is, actually. There reminds me of people who, like, run out of, like, a burning building, and, like, they escape the burning building, and then they, like, go back into the building to save people, but then they die because they went back in, and they would have lived if they just stayed out of the building. Yeah. Um... I don't get it when people go into burning buildings. Because like... you're probably not going to save the All... person anyway. You're just going to get call... yourself killed. Yeah, yeah, call the fire people. Yeah. We're gonna call... Not fire. rocket science. No, just it's... just call the fire, fire people. Science. Um, Speaking of fire and people not understanding fire and safety stuff, I remember all the different times the fire alarm has gone off in my school. Because we have a faulty fire alarm that keeps going off. So sometimes if the principal doesn't give word that it's like a false alarm soon enough, everybody will just go outside and do the fire drill. Uh, but what happens is people bring their school bags with them like you're oh. not meant to do that you're meant to leave your personal belongings behind yeah like that could be an actual crowd crush issue if there is a real fire yeah i personally is... i i like my stuff but i don't like my stuff that much yeah, yeah. i like my stuff exactly. but it's replaceable i don't bring anything irreplaceable with me to school yeah pretty much i mean i bring my sketchbook with me but like i mean you'd be sad also, to miss your you'd be sad to lose your sketchbook but you know you'd get over it you'd just get another sketchbook and just draw new drawings yeah exactly i but, like i and also my sketchbook is like really small i like ah, yeah it, it wouldn't be a fire hazard to bring it with me okay mm-hmm. i mean if you can fit it in your pocket then grunt go for it yeah yeah I also used to, uh, uh, when my school did fire drills. I would at that point uh, we weren't supposed to, but I I kept my phone in my pocket. You were supposed to leave it in your uh, uh, locker. Um, oh, locker. Locker, but I I like kept it in my pocket. It was still off and stuff, but it was just because I was sick like super often, and it was like way too much effort to like almost at least once every week uh, to like go out to my locker and then wait two minutes for like it to turn on because my phone sucks ass oh it was just like enough. a lot of effort yeah, yeah i remember so, like yeah i because because yeah 
Remember yeah. for a second of charger because I finished just finished charger. So the COVID years of school, we were allowed to have like a our fo- usually we'd have to keep the phones in our locker, but this time we were allowed to have phones on our person because like we'd no lockers to keep them. Whoa! In, and they just oh, didn't bother right. making us put them back in the lockers when we got the lockers back, and it actually worked because then you could just whip your phones out and do a kahoot or whatever. But uh, do you know what happens is happening now? We're gonna just have to put them back into the lockers for like the upcoming school year even though we got on just fine with them yeah yeah because yeah. schools are stupid they yeah. are mother, which is fairly ironic and <laughs> quite hilarious very ironic thing. quite silly and goofy if i do say myself sure well if you're not sure. talking about yourself then you shouldn't really have any problem with saying it yourself what i don't know i'm pretty sure that's how it works no, that that sentence hurts my brain. Okay. Cease speech. I haven't gotten enough sleep to be socializing with you. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm not good for people. No, who you're great, the... but I know I'm great, but like, not when you haven't had enough sleep. Yeah. Did mm-hmm. you yeah. know? No. That during the Great Depression in America. Uh, they people made clothes out of like potato sacks and stuff so the factories for those sacks started putting pretty patterns on them <gasps> yeah I did not do that. well now you do something new every day I did I, I didn't in fact know that I did know that but yeah I guess you learn something new every podcast episode y'all you should start listening to it <laughs> Did yeah. you know that in ancient no. Greece, this is probably not true because ancient Greece didn't have a modern day concept of vampires, but they apparently, according to this article, believed that redheads became vampires when they died because of how pale they are. <laughs> Did they have the modern concept of redheads? Uh, I wouldn't like... say they're... That's, that's why I'm kind of iffy about this one, because... Because of, you know, how the Mediterranean be, they wouldn't have a lot of redheads. And they also didn't have a modern concept of vampires. They had undead creatures, but, yeah, you know, yeah, everything I've never met Dracula is pretty weird. I've never met, like, a Mediterranean redhead. Actually, I met a redheaded Bosnian once. And she was like, she looked very Irish. She was just, like, really pale, red hair, blue eyes. But mm-hmm. according to her, she has no like known Northern European ancestry. Okay, I'm I'm looking up. Did Egyptians have vampires? Vampires in ancient Egypt. Vampire folklore by region from Wikipedia. I'm listening to this. Not listening to. I'm Abraham this now. Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was a licensed bartender. Swag, mm. as opposed to an unlicensed bartender, as in he just showed. I mean, this could be completely wrong, but I remember hearing that the Pope used to work in nightclubs in Buenos Aires. <laughs> I want that to be Which true. Which Pope? The current like, the one? current Pope, because like he's like Pope Francis, because <laughs> you know how he's from Argentina. And this is actually true. Angela Merkel used to be a bartender. Wow. Um, fun fact about the French. Um, the first case of tungsten poisoning in history was in the 1990s. When a French soldier was drinking wine out of the barrel of his gun, and a few hours later he had cramps and a fever, and he had tungsten poisoning. There needs to be a chubby emu video about that. They're really stupid. Hello, who's here? Alden. Alden! Go, Alden, go. You can't, you don't get to unmute. What Thank you. else? <laughs> Did you know that in like the Victorian era, if I'm remembering it correctly, yeah, 16th century. I don't know what that means. Uh, but they used to eat. Uh, they used to eat dead people. I did not know that, but I am not surprised. Uh, yeah. Also, these dead people parties would uh, at that same time frame. Uh, pineapples were quite exotic and expensive. So people would have pineapples at their dead people parties to show the other people who were there to eat dead people 
and specifically Egyptian mo mummies, that they were rich and cool. Oh, yeah. I heard that a lot of the time these fancy foreign fruits, they're more of a status symbol than something you actually ate. Yeah. Hmm. I'm on the Wikipedia page for Vampire Folklore by Region, and the first thing I see is an image. It's a lithograph by R. de Moraine, and it's called Le Vampire. Le and Vampire? That, that name. Le, Le Vampire. <laughs> so, hold on. Uh, I'm Le gonna, Vampire. I'll get up that wiki. Le. It's probably Le Vampire, because it's like Moran and Le Trebunach. It's a very French. Mesopotamia. Ancient Greece, Ancient so Jewish... Ireland and Scotland has uh, vampire folklore, apparently. Um, the yeah, Malayan I mean, we have... We have, have some like... pretty trippy folklore. Like, yeah. Japan and that. Um, yeah. The Malayan... Oh my god! Uh, like... Guys, 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 guys. What? Um, what? You know... You know Fionn McCool? Yeah. And in that one myth where he dives into the, the lake gets some no. witch lady's ring and he goes old. I don't know that one. He was, right. he well, was the one that on... was salmon thing. He was salmon guy, yeah. And he was called Fionn McCool because he oh, was like, one, really, really blonde. Because he went pure, prematurely white because he went swimming in this uh, lake on Schlieve Gullion, which is the ancestral land of my family. I'm also mentioned by name in the Book of Invasions, which is pretty cool. I just know Gang Book of Invasions is in the Horse Lips album. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, <laughs> which is a banger album, also. But, actually, yeah, but really I never cool. uh, actually yeah, pay attention to what the lyrics mean in any of the songs. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there was like three High Kings of Ireland at one point, uh, and one of them was, and I am a, the only one in the world. I'm, I'm just pretty. I- I'm not like a- I'm not like other guys, you guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually really cool. <laughs> um, I know. Uh, can we give- can you give me like two yeah. seconds to take off my hoodie? Because I'm Go overheating on. a bit. Cool. Yeah. Don't slander me this time. Did any of um, you read a book in primary school called The Custodian? I did not. Uh, anyway, uh, if I can remember it correctly, it was written by the children of Doro National School. Which I did not attend, but anyway, yeah. It was written by the sixth class kids a few years ago in Duro Natural School. Okay. About this kid in Tullamore who, uh, basically, like, uh, he lived in, like, Kildare for a bit, I think. Then he moves back to Tullamore and, uh, turns out he's, like, descended from, like, uh, you know, like the high kings of Ireland, you know, the O'Connors and Offaly basically. And uh I don't know, funk I forget the book really, but like funky stuff happens. Yeah. I see. Funky stuff. God R the Boston Molasses disaster is in this article I'm reading. Oh. Mm -hmm. Alright. Fun thing about my family, we have uh we have uh, we most of us came from Cork. Most of you did what? Like the old, the older members of our family came from Cork, and yeah. we actually have a village in Cork that was given us by the McKellistrums, I think, the McKellistrum clan, because we sided with them like the little bitches that we are. I've heard of that clan just because I think a few of their modern descendants no. ran for election or something. It was the Desmond, sorry. We started know. with the Desmond. They were like the big cheeses around the I'm fairly certain. I'm I think my great grandfather, possibly great great grandfather, did some sort of weapons delivery during the rising, which is kinda kinda cool. Oh, this is a fun fact. So I think my grandmother's aunt basically uh some point in the early 1900s, not during the rising, but you know, close enough to the time, uh, she worked for Joseph Plunkett's parents, and she was meant to be a maid on paper, but you know, with a bit of a wink and a nudge, she was like uh, carrying weapons. Oh wow! Yeah, that is pretty cool. Hey. Yeah, my great grandfather 
was a personal friend of Michael Collins and helped him out with like they won stuff and they saved each other's lives a couple times so pretty cool he, he didn't save my family Collins just the last time yeah but you know I sometimes love how in Irish <laughs> I love how an Irish family in Irish like oh, I, Irish families everyone knew someone who was a big name yeah yeah literally everyone pretty much we're yeah. i think it's just because we're all unilaterally cool unless you think we should have england back in which case you're wrong and stupid and no one likes you poor poor jakey poo <laughs> no not not english people i don't mind english people. England. what poo i do is mind england. is unionist Jakey Poo is like England. People. You don't like people. I don't like unionists. Okay. I Things like are getting political. Which... avoided yeah. too much political stuff up to this point because I thought this was like a very not political podcast. Yeah. We don't I really like that... cancelled for these hot takes in like 20 years time. <laughs> My god. Uh, yeah. I feel yeah. like it would be a good idea to just stay away from Irish politics. Yeah. Or any politics. It being the nightmare that, that it is. Yeah. Apart from perhaps dissing on presidents from ages ago. Or Aha, talking Jim. about, you know, weird personal familial uh, connections. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that my family is just super cool and your family is possibly less cool. I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough about your family. To Mine cool. is, to be fair, less cool. It's cool, but it's less cool. Mine is kind of good. My family is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, yes, Pix. Jake is the the uh, the representative of England and Britain as a whole in Ireland. I have put this in a few times. A photo of my grandfather with James Connolly's daughter. That's actually pretty sick. Yeah. I it mean, is. he was never going to meet James Connolly because like, he was born after James Connolly died. But yeah, that's the next best thing. Yeah, you never know. Seances are pretty fun. Sometimes, haven't mm -hmm. experimented at all. Or, um, <laughs> no, so would... what am I talking about? Ha ha ha. Um, yeah, what other wacky history is there? Oh, um, a while ago, like not, not this century or this millennium, actually, which is, yeah. In the eighteen, yeah, in the eighteen hundreds, I think some guys were digging a canal, some place in America, I'm pretty sure, and they accidentally made a sea because it was near the coast, and they like dug, they made a mistake, and the sea started flowing into the hole they'd made. They were digging some sort of water storage, it might have been a reservoir. And the sea started flowing in, and it may and it's one of the biggest ever changes to the geological map that human beings have. Exactly, Pix. Backwards river. And it is now stagnated and disgusting. See, I know like bizarre twentieth century Irish politics happenings, but I don't know anything that would be uh, appropriate to discuss in this episode. Ah, I see. How about we all pretend it's actually from Armenia? Actually from what? Armenia. Armenia. Yeah. So specific. Well, yeah. I don't think I have too much to say about Armenian history. It's not something I know a lot about. Ah, but we could pretend that the Irish history you know is actually Armenian history. So we're going to pretend that, like, Tullamore is a town in Armenia. Yeah. Yeah. We could call it Tullam Armenia. Tullam Armenia. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, SDXY, how are you at drawing feathers? Stuxy. Stuxy. Quite bad, but if I got enough references, I could do a passable job. Okay, wonderful. Because I'm going to make you draw. Uh, I'm going to. One of the DD characters that you have been told about is a kenku and kenkus are birds i know what a kenku is just in case you didn't why wouldn't i i don't know i am because... 
a nerd. Yeah. But you said that it's your first DD campaign, so, you know. It just. It was just in the case. That doesn't make me less of a nerd. But for anyone listening who didn't know what a Kenku is, a Kenku is a bird, which is why I was bringing up feathers. Thank you, that is all. Woo! Woo-hoo. We've been going for like 40 minutes, is the actual yeah. episode. We've somehow marched on this episode in a zombified state. It is a little zombified. Ooh. Um, how about we... Um, That's how we be we sometimes, do... you know. Sometimes. Which is distressing. Should we try some Did sort we? of game? Because they usually work pretty well. What kind of game? Yeah, they work the... Any um... kind of game. I mean, I don't Anything mind the historical us... discussion in the meantime, but yeah. Any um... any sort of game usually gets us vibing. Why do we start yeah. talking about Offaly? I don't know anything Offaly. about Offaly. Yeah, but I can that. teach you all about Offaly because exactly. I'm from there. Go- oh, right, yes. Go for it. Okay, so Offaly had that aviation disaster. Barack Obama's great 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 grandfather was from Moneygall in Offaly, and that's why there's the Barack Obama Plaza there. Uh, what other facts about Offaly? Uh, we have a really big telescope in Burkassum. Anyone have anything to say there? Um, I think I... I've been there. Yeah. It's really cool. And I love it. Yeah, and Burr it was is the biggest like telescope the nice in the part world. of Offaly. It was the biggest telescope in the world for a, for a, a long time. And that's yeah, when were you really there? cool. Years ago. Okay. Well, I've you... been there twice. The last time was probably five years ago. I, anyway, yeah. yeah, it was the biggest in the world for a while. Uh, we had an unusual murder situation in Offaly in the summer of 1982. Oh, I love murder. Murder. It was grotesque, unbelievable, bizarre, and unprecedented, to quote Charles Hawley there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, basically, there was a fella called Malcolm <laughs> Matar. He had a load of money that he didn't it's really me, have I'm to work folk. for. The money ran out, and he had to, like he decided to fund his lifestyle by robbery so uh anyway I love uh, robbery. he needs to go he need he needed to get to eden Derry county offley uh to like buy a gun but he had no transport to get there oh. so he stole a car he committed a crime cause. to I... get to his crime yeah so he steals the car then and in order to steal the car he like uh bludgeons uh I won't get too graphic. Anyway, he kills, he like, kills, he kills Please. the driver and leaves him fucking in the backseat. Anyway, uh, and he has a, an eventful journey to Eden Dairy. He has to abandon the car for various reasons. I he takes three more days to get there. I'm going to assume he walked or some shit. Uh, then he murders <laughs> the guy he's buying the gun from with his own gun. Then steals their he car, just steals that guy's car, drives okay. back to Dublin, yeah. and then he's later found hiding in the house of the Attorney General. <laughs> That's actually uh. kind of a girl boss. I'm not going to call murder girl boss. Just I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Well, I just did for you. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, I don't know if you call girl boss when like the perpetrator was a man, but yeah. He is a girl boss. Girl boss is a gender neutral term. Okay, are you sure yeah, you don't want to get cancelled for any of this? <laughs> I would love to get cancelled. Oh, canceled we don't have this. enough fans to if get cancelled. I get cancelled if if I get cancelled for anything, this is what I want to get cancelled for. I mean this is my Winty has style. Winty has options on things to get cancelled for, so yeah. I do, yeah. Uh, oh, you've like a whole history of cancelable offences. Well. I probably do. Probably. What kind Just of skeletons in the closet have you got? What is my worst skeleton in the closet that I can say out loud without actually being arrested on the spot? Um, what's the name of the place? Uh, hang on, I've just got to look up the name of the place because I forget where exactly it was. Maybe you shouldn't say name. where it was. Why would I not do that? The usual doxing issues. Um. Oh no, it wasn't Narland. Oh yeah. Where was this place then? Docked away. Oh, it was um, it was My Lai, in Vietnam. You've hardly been to Vietnam, have you? If <laughs> I haven't actually, but 
that's a joke because there's during the Vietnam War, there was oh, no. a massacre. Uh, there was a massacre by the U.S. Army. Um, the My Lai massacre was the mass murder of unarmed South Vietnamese civilians by United States troops on in Son Son Tai Son Tain District, South Vietnam, on 16 March 1968. It's, uh, how many people were killed? Between 347 and 504 unarmed people were killed. So, do you get my, my funny, hilarious joke? Yeah, but where is your connection here? I was saying that that was one of my cancelable, cancelable offences. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. You find that I participated in the massacre. Anyways, uh, just to keep the conversation going, share us a not cancelable, but still very interesting and weird fact about yourself. Um, I once bruised my teeth. Uh, I exhausted them all talking about my family earlier. <laughs> That's all my interesting facts. I was I... seven at a funeral. And as you do when you're seven, you were playing tag outside the funeral home. Because we're real sensitive kids. And there's this metal bar that happens to be the right height to smack a seven-year-old kid in the face when they're running directly towards it and teeth have blood vessels in them a bruise is breaking of a blood vessel and i yeah. bruised my teeth what does a bruised tooth look like is it, does it, go purple? it was stained purple yeah it was stained Whoa. brown then purple then it went back to brown and white oh this is a uh, and... bizarre uh, dental situation that happened in my primary school once on one of like the last days in sixth class. So basically, uh, this was like maybe like the second or third last day of school ever. And then uh, we had a graduation ceremony in the evening. Then people were like playing in the ba in like the school yard, and then one of them like whipped out their phone and like prank called Childline, which I'm not going to condone. Oh. And anyway, yeah, as they were prank calling Childline, another girl in the class got hit in the face with a ball and chipped her tooth. And people were laughing at the prank call to Childline, and then she thought they were laughing at her chipping her tooth. So they were like, oh. no, we weren't laughing at you, we were laughing at Childline, as if that makes it any better. <laughs> Damn. That has to be one of my favourite, favourite tropes, not the like in in media like when people are doing something stupid that they shouldn't be doing and they it may, ends up making it seem like they're doing something else that is also bad but then they're like oh no we're not committing a murder we're committing a robbery like as if it's not gonna get them not sent to jail oh i eat that shit up i don't yeah, know if that's yeah. like a me thing you remember that big scandal matt hancock was in last year which Not one? There was the one where like he quite... kissed someone. People were all up in arms about the fact that he breached COVID restrictions. Not the part. Not the bit that he was oh. having an affair. Yep, I remember this. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm trying to think. What's the weirdest injury I've gotten? Like just branching off from the bruised teeth part. Yeah. No, yeah. I went to no, hospital never speak once about that again, as a little kid because I ran into a door handle. You did what as a little kid? I ran into a door handle because I was at like eye level with the door handle. Oh shit! That yeah, hurt. and I went to hospital and I was fine, but I had blurred vision in that eye for a few hours. Oh god! Right. Okay. If that's what constitutes a weird injury, I have a few. Go on. So first of oh, all, god. the first time that I no, what the first time? Uh, I when I broke my arm, it didn't. I didn't break it in any semblance of a normal way uh i was playing with my oldest brother and he threw me onto a bed that was in the room i landed on my arm and it fractured i was not oh. heavy enough to fracture my own arm so he must have been absolutely fucking like he must have been trying to break something i was like younger than eight yeah, gotcha. like i was i know I was in, in no way like heavy enough to yeah. do that kind of pressure, like, breaking on my own. I forget if it, I forget who this was, but I know a child in my immediate family went to hospital once for uh, stuffing styrofoam up their nose as a three-year-old. What? <laughs> 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 
Um, I've got th three wonky stories. They're not that bad, but they're just kind of wacky. Um, the first one, I have a plushy snake with... It's probably about... Two, it's probably about a meter and a half long. It's impressive, and I love it. And it's got plastic oh, eyes. Hi, Alexi. Alexi. And one time Why when I was a young one, I wasn't being mean. I was saying hi. You, Hello, you were like, Lexi. hi. Yeah, <laughs> I was. That's better. Go on. Anyway, I had my snake, and I was swinging my snake near my brother, and it smacked him in the tooth, knocked out one of his teeth, and gave him a nosebleed. <laughs> the other week, I, I was in the pool, and my sister had a boogie board, because girl boss, and I, like, shoved it towards her, and it hit her in the nose, and she got a nosebleed, and we were laughing for ages, because we just finished watching Stranger Things. I won't explain that mm -hmm. because that would be spoilers, but anyone who's seen Stranger Things, like more than a single episode will know. What was her thing? Oh, You don't even time... need to see Stranger Things to get that. You just need to have existed anywhere near a Stranger Things fan artist. Yeah, That's pretty all much. They or just someone <laughs> who's seen Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they yeah. they really don't shut up about it. Not this really. is meant to as shaded to yeah. your towards your kind. There was one more thing. I have another injury. Go on. Okay. I have Go another injury it. while you collect yourself. Uh I once was going down a you know the No, that wouldn't be doxing myself. There's a canal near my house, right? And um it has like pathways it's kind of on either side of it that okay. are like asphalt um and i was just chilling going down on my little itty bitty scooter oh. when it hit forward that's pretty while nice. i was oh. still on it <laughs> oh <laughs> that's a bit of a yikes so uh it was actually fine it didn't hurt that much it didn't bleed uh, I just uh, got to, uh, I, my mom took me to a, the spa near where it happened, got me a muju, we went to the hospital, I was fine. Moral of the story, if you do that, you get a free muju. <laughs> I remember I had to get teeth taken out, like, the teeth were perfectly healthy, it was just the place they were in my mouth meant that they, like might not always be in such good shape so anyway ah. getting the teeth taken out yeah the dentist doesn't even leave enough time to let the anesthetic set in so oh. i felt this freaking extraction and there were two more teeth to take out and my parents felt so sorry for me that they gave me 10 euros for every tooth that had to be taken out so i got 30 euros that day whoa the first part's Loaded. not very good boss the second part is quite good. Yeah, I don't even remember what I Extremely spent it on. Extremely Well, with that kind of money, you don't need to remember what you spent it on. Apart from when I was being born, which I don't count, because everyone's been hospitalised unless they're a home birth in that case, I do think... Uh, I was a uh, home birth. That's weird. I, I do think that uh, the, the door handle incident was probably my stupidest hospitalisation, because it's um, my only one. Fair enough. Yeah. Apart from um, being born, but I don't count that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Alden, for also being born. Um, wait, were you born at my house too? Nice. Um, <laughs> I was not born at your house, but I, I, maybe I'm misjudging home birth people, but I've always wondered why you would want a home birth, especially if there's a hospital near you. It's not very near, actually. It's like a 15-minute drive. That's, and I guess my parents just weren't near. prepared for that. <laughs> It is quite they near, weren't yeah. prepared they just... for a 15 minute drive. No, to yeah. give birth. So I was like living in County Kildare for the first couple of years of my life. But I was born in Dublin, which is probably a longer drive. Ah, I see. Yeah. Um, I remembered my story. Hey. Um, one time we were at the nursing home visiting my grandfather. And 
my sister was probably about five at the time and she was talking to our cousin who was probably about 16 at the time and he was holding a popcorn kernel i don't know where he got this because it's a nursing home they don't they haven't heard of popcorn there and he was too, holding too, it are on... you saying that they're too old for popcorn yes no but they just haven't heard of it yet no one in the nursing home has heard of popcorn i don't know why they just all right yeah. <laughs> i'll take your word for it neither yeah. of my grandparents were in yeah nursing homes. anyway he he was holding this kernel under her nose and being the absolute genius that she is she took a deep sniff and got a popcorn kernel lodged in her oh, nose no. <laughs> for the next oh, the sh- three and a half hours i think i took the brain cells from the rest of my family <laughs> Wait, if you're the one with the most brain cells, that's worrying, man. It kind of is. What do you mean it kind of is? It straight up Um, is, is. Are you calling me stupid? No, I'm calling you wonky. I am very wonky. Exceedingly wonky. Exactly. You are exceeding. Is life just a terminal STD? Who knows? Probably. Is yeah. You could say that. Technically. Probably. Right. Anyone else have any interesting hospitalization Ooh, yeah. stories? Let's, My let's birth go to the audience. Birth. I uh, love giving birth. Cut a long story short, my birth was quite the unpleasant experience for all parties involved. Okay. Yeah. Is there any more detail? Uh, basically, uh, not to be too dramatic, but, uh, how, how do I explain it? Yeah, so you know the way babies are meant to be born head first? Yeah. yeah. I was a girl boss rebel baby, and I didn't want to do that. I wanted to close <laughs> arm first, which is just, which is not the oh, way that babies first? can fit down the birch canal. So this, the, the spend a good bit of time can it no move me around into a suitable uh, position. Oh. And the problem is, I couldn't breathe ah. at that time, which sometimes causes brain damage. And I looked out and didn't get brain damage, but uh, to be to be fair, like being concerned about that would be a hundred percent justified. That is quite a story. Yeah, it's this is an interesting hospitalization story. So I know yeah. uh, someone who, because of I don't even know what went wrong, but they had to get surgery on their dick uh so everybody thought like all their friends thought that they didn't have one and the best part of this whole story is that they turned out to be trans femme (laughs) oh that is brilliant that is absolutely i hope my parents um... never listen to this podcast because they know (laughs) i'm recording it because i told them i'm not podcast so that they'd like leave me alone and not come into the room yeah. I'm not allowing my family to listen to call. it. Good not call. my immediate family, anyway. Uh, I've t- my dad thinks I'm just on a, like, and... a... I, my dad thinks this is a social night, so... And does he not disturb you during social nights? Well, he's downstairs, and I'm upstairs, so... Does he disturb you anyway? No, my dad's chill. I'm gonna chill? flex my dad on you guys. Yeah. This that brings to mind someone grasping their father by the ankles and using the whip. I don't know why it brings this to mind, it just does. Dix. Yeah. Please don't whip me with your dad. With your dad whip. Was you know not what's planning awesome? on it. In D and D, there are whips made of spinal cords. But that's a spinal like one cord of the is not the most. Actually, maybe it's... I've never handled a spinal cord before, but like, isn't isn't the spinal what? cord like a bunch of like loose bones? Like, like... they probably are sort of loose. But yeah, Indian. I don't know about the spine. The, the spine the is a bunch of loose pebble bones, but I don't know about the spinal cord specifically. I don't know if they're different. 
no, so wait. No doctor. Not the spinal cord, because the cord is the actual big nerve. The big thick boy nerve. It's made of the, the vertebrae. There are whips made of the oh, vertebrae. That would really It hurt. would. That would be pretty um, ouchy. I, I was talking like about that. whipping my daddy, because that's just what I talk about. Right, uh, that concludes our episode for today. Wait, what? <laughs> no, uh, I just... After that comment, I, I'd rather not yeah. speak to Winty anymore. <laughs> but we're going to do that anyway. No shade, Winty. We're, we're not. No, we're, we're not. We're not finished yet. I'm not done with you yet, sticks. What did Winty say? Well, it would be more um, accurate, accurate to say what did I say this time? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Lexi, I think it was the fact that I, I was talking remember. about using. Um, I was talking about the concept of yeah whipping daddies exactly like you pick up your dad <laughs> by the ankles and then use him as a whip oh. it is quite gay uh... i yeah. missed out on that context when you said it i should not be in charge of this though <laughs> yeah the rules of truly is on how do you feel about that sir? um no enough about the rules of truly to have emotions it's... about the rules of truly I've been to Trolley a couple times. It's an alright place. It's got a really... Been. It's got. It's actually got a really cool square. It's got a oh, nice like main street. Yeah. It's not an actual square because people square are dumb. Though. What? Why would you name it a square if it's not... I don't know. But the, there's like shops around the edges. But it's got these art. It's got this art piece, which is like a row of stone globes, not a, a row of stone spheres, and it's really cool. Uh, the only bad thing is that you can't roll them around and just balk people. But yeah. Oh, Pix, this one isn't even a triangle. Just it's just a two D shape of mm -hmm. exactly, Lexi. Dutch is winty. Right, English. we should we should get back on the topic that we were talking about earlier. Oh wait, yeah. How long has it been since we actually talked about history? Quite a while. Probably the first five minutes of the episode. So but that's know. just how silly goofy we are. Um, we are pretty silly goofy. We were talking about like interesting quirky history stuff. I think the most recent thing we said was how the French soldier got tungsten poisoning yeah or we could just move on to another topic entirely because these don't usually stay on topic the only one that's ever stayed on topic was episode three because we literally had a game uh yeah to keep us on topic yeah like that's specifically fair. so we, we, we can rambled a little bit go as on off rounds, but... yeah yeah but like oh, a, a, like Ace a is normal here. amount. Six, six, six. Ace. Ace. Ace! Hello there. Hi! Ace. Hello! You sound so happy. E. I have started learning <laughs> shorthand. This is not related to anything. I have started learning shorthand. Lexi Dix has a girlfriend. No. Remember this? Not only that, but uh, in the lore of the server, Ace is my parent. <laughs> oh, I'm simply a seven-year-old child who is yeah. delighted that their father came home from getting milk. Alright? That's all this is. Lexi! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah but, but you got here earlier when I was tired. So. Also, so you didn't get milk, so, you know. <laughs> I'm, clearly, I'm, I'm clearly picking favourites. Yes. Obviously. Love picking favorites. Mm. Oh, hi Akira. Well, Kira, you were here from the start right, when I was like super tired, but um, uh. to make up for this. Ah! Hi. Hello. I'm... Great, moving swiftly onwards. True. <laughs> Do we have anything at all that we want to talk about? Like, literally anything. Do you guys know much about the physics of Splatoon? Uh,. No, but I do know that you hate it, and that your rant didn't make it into episode four. So and go Rebecca off. tried to record it. I was 
actually upset. You were that literally, was. you were literally pissing, shitting, throwing up. I wasn't. You were really sick at the time. <laughs> I wasn't really sick. I was slightly mm -hmm. sick to my stomach. I wasn't throwing up. But I was just incredibly disappointed that Rebecca's recording didn't work. Yeah, that was... That hurt. Who anyway, was... go, on your, go on your rant again. It was awesome. <laughs> I... Please don't it won't die have the same time. results as last time. It won't have the same results as last time, because last time I was already worked up, because somebody was dissing on Terraria, and I was sick. I... Um, okay. Emily, I... but... Yeah. By the way, have you ever played Terraria? No. There. Do you there know? There you go. Now you've got the fire. <laughs> Do you know much about Terraria? Well, I heard it's a bit like Minecraft. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh. No. No, right. actually, it is Winchy, Winchy, dearest, do you have enough fire to go on your your I your do now! Tonight? Thank you for <sighs> that. <sighs> Winter is very entertaining when they're actually throwing up with anger. Anyone saying that Terraria is like my... Do you have any experience with Terraria whatsoever? Emily, other than people no. telling you that it's like Minecraft. I've never played it and I don't even watch Let's Plays of it. <laughs> Winter, just do the ranting so we, you can get these emotions out. Lexi, have you ever played Terraria? Oh, fuck, I'm dizzy. <laughs> oh, shit. Maybe you weren't sick, maybe you were just really, really angry. <laughs> Both, I think. Yeah. Both. <sighs> right, get ranting. Terraria. That's is the only reason so I provoked you. much more than 2D Minecraft. <laughs> Since when does Minecraft have golf with multiple different NPCs with characters, interactions? They've got NPCs that they prefer, they have preferred biomes that they oh, live in. You can they... build towns, you can have town pets, you could. Have <laughs> Shut up. I'm trying to make a point. Do, oh. Did Minecraft ever have the holy gra holy hand grenade? No. Not without continue. mod, bitches. Winter, you can continue now. I just wanted to make superior that point. to Minecraft. I will always love to. The beautiful game. Right, do you have enough fire? Do you have enough fire for the splitting round now? I might. Please say you do. <gasps> Yay! I might. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> I've never played Splatoon either, fun fact. You're lucky. I literally just play Minecraft and Pokemon and like a little bit of Mario Kart, that's it. I can't argue with those three, apart from Pokemon. I oh, could, I could talk about Splatoon Pokemon. Rant. I don't do know if I should. What, Winter, what did you say about Pokemon? I, 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 I have your... some things to say about Pokemon. Go on. Don't provoke Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I should, uh, because, ugh. oh god, Kira sent a spoiler message. Just fucking say it. Just fucking say it. Kira, that hurts my soul. I won't lie. That. <sighs> okay, Winter. Ignore. Yeah. Talk about Platoon. <sighs> Please, it was so entertaining. <laughs> It was. I don't. I don't have the fire that I had last time. I think. Right. Somebody ping Polly. But... <laughs> no. <laughs> Polly ping. Wait. Should I do AJR this time? For which? Because AJR. They're my favorite band. They're amazing. Ryan from them looks like he's shitsing. So AJR is a hip hop band for background. They are my favorite yeah. band. They're very good. Their most known songs are probably World's Smallest Violin, definitely. Bang, with an exclamation mm. mark. And 100 Bad Days, mm, and I'm Ready. That gives me an idea. 
Okay. Anyway. Uh, you, you saying bang gave me an idea, but I'll wait. Okay. AJR is dissed on for by doing Bowie. what they do, which is... AJR is dissed on for singing about things that everybody goes through. Such as a couple of... one of my very favourite song by them, one of them, is called Don't Throw Out My Legos, and it's about not being ready to move, to grow up and move out of your parents' house. It's an amazing song with a brilliant intro that goes da 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 anyway. And everyone, everyone, like, they're called generic, and it's so frustrating. It's painful because people compare them to artists like Olivia Rodrigo, Billie Eilish, and stuff like that. Because no. they're singing about. Yeah. No! Exactly. Oh my because god! Those, what the fuck? those artists sing, sing about, you know, being betrayed in relationships, breaking up, and those are things that everybody does. The, people criticize. You've never been in a relationship before. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I frankly have no idea what you just said because I'm just. Could you repeat that, if you please? I said, unless you've never been in a relationship before. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Or just never been betrayed before, you lucky mugfucky. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, anyway. AJR, <laughs> their whole thing is they use weird sounds, wacky sounds to make brilliant beats and tunes, and their lyrics are phenomenal. People criticize them for these lyrics because they say that they're saying about things that everyone goes through. That's their whole thing. Billie Eilish, I, okay, Billie Eilish and Olivia Rodrigo, I will admit, I cannot go off about them because that would also be going off, off about AJR if I say that they're only singing about things that everyone experiences. But the thing is, <laughs> Billie Eilish and Olivia Rodrigo seem to only sing about the same thing, which is breaking up and being betrayed. AJR sings about everything that everyone experiences. <laughs> and not that's not the only that's thing surprised. they sing about. That they've sung about Winter? a lot of stuff. Winter. Yes. Winter. Yes. Breath. <laughs> Breathe in. Being very uh, passionate. Deep this is in. actually turning into the Splatoon rant. Okay, not exactly what I expected to say, but it's important to say, if you are worried about Winter's well-being and welfare, which firstly, we thank you for your concern. Secondly, more importantly, everything's okay. No harm ever comes to anyone during an episode. And if we're ever worried, we do, you know, cut the recording and all that. But uh, yeah, everything's okay. Winter just gets exceptionally passionate and a bit worked up, but no harm came of any of this. I won't continue very long because I'm going to die again so again soon. <laughs> AJR has sung about so much stuff. One of their one of their very best songs, a single called Dear Winter, you can see where I got the name for this podcast. <laughs> is <laughs> it's not something that everyone experiences. It's singing a song to one of the band members, unborn child, that he wants to name Winter. He's singing about how it's impossible to find someone he can love in today's society. That's what the song is about. You can't say that everyone experiences that. It's not a generic thing. It's a beautiful song with beautiful chords and beautiful lyrics and tune. I wrote my own parody to it. That's how amazing the song is. And it's not generic in the slightest. Even the songs that are a little generic, let's say Bang. Bang is their most popular song. I'm fairly certain. It is. It's about moving out, not being ready to be in a. Shut up. Sorry, but. Shut up. Your heart is going to explode. It's about not being You're going ready. to die. I'm not that bad yet, Sticks. I'm getting there, but I'm not that bad yet. <laughs> no, it's bad enough. Bang for is about game not. Not being ready to move to move out and be an adult. <laughs> but that song is the catchiest fucking thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and the chorus is just it's joyous and it's so happy and it's pumped. A 
Bela Sad is a song about depression, which is it's unfortunately quite common. It's a thing that a lot of people experience. But they've managed to turn a song about depression into one of the happiest, most funkiest things I've ever heard. I could listen to their music all day and all night. I would not get sick of it. Christmas in June is the most beautiful song I have ever heard of modern music. Hands down. That There's no competition about that. I will never ever not love Christmas in June. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it talking to Polly. Uh, Polly as somebody who doesn't listen to AJR, this is a very confusing conversation for me. Yes, it is. I think most people here don't listen to AJR. I'm the, the random words that I say that don't really fit into the sentences, they're the name of their songs. <laughs> Christmas in June is a song about being a music artist, not generic, and how he can't he can't balance his love life and his relationship with being on tour. He's saying, <laughs> the, the chorus goes, um, hang on, how's the chorus? Um, no, I'm too worked up to remember the chorus, but I remember the last bit. He says, hold on love a little longer while I get the album done. And if I get to tour, wouldn't that be fun? That's one less month with you. Du, 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 du. Holy shit. Now I'm sitting thinking about what else I miss. Darling, if we're ever gonna have a kid, they wanna miss it. Can we just have him in June? And it's a beautiful song. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't listen to it for its meaning. Because that's one of the stupidest things I... <laughs> I, I know that people do, because you shouldn't listen to songs for the meaning unless they're written for the meaning. Listen to the songs for the, for the aesthetic sounds. Listen to the aesthetic songs Aesthetic sounds. The, yeah. But listen I, to the songs for the vibes, you guys. Listen to the song for the music that these people have made for you. <laughs> you I am panting. <laughs> Yes, Ace, I appreciate that you like songs with meaning, but people put too much talk in the meaning. I have friends who perpetually shit on what is Imagine Dragons because their lyrics are hollow and that, but their lyrics work amazingly with their songs. They're so catchy, which is brilliant. Imagine Dragons is a very enjoyable band to listen to. I like listening to them for two reasons. One, fuck my friends. If they don't like it, I'm going to listen a little bit more, actually. And two, I'm so listening to them. So in character for you. Ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I listen to them because people don't like them. Just because they have no... Because you're petty. Because they seem to have... An, I am quite petty about the Madden Dragons, yeah. I didn't even like them before I heard that people don't. And, and oh, then people so in them. character. I hate overpopular things, and I love some underappreciated or controversial things. <laughs> oh my god. We should my... we should probably yeah. end this. We've yeah. been going for Good idea. an hour and a half now. Yeah. And most of it was usable. We didn't do an outro. I'm going to... We need to do an outro. Outro. Oh, fuck. Rarest <laughs> apologies for that, dear listeners. Look, uh... Go check the... Mod talk. Uh, shameless plug! Dear listeners. Yeah, no, but we're... I have been Winter. And I have been Styx. We have been definitely a podcast. Thank you very much for listening to this episode and probably listening to my obsessive AJR loving. Now, Styx, you say something nice? Here, you have to sing a song. Oh, I sang the ending to Christmas in June. No, you don't have to. Look, come on. You can, like, pull up the lyrics or whatever. It can be any song you fucking want. You just have to sing it for the outro. 
and the uh, hide screen. Come on. Okay, I can't sing Christmas in June because the chorus goes too high. Should I sing Drinking Song? It's the first song that I ever that I sang for you. Remember that? But oh yeah. Do you remember oh, it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> on mute. I might have grown to be a sailor on the seven seas and save the hero of the story from the belly of the beast. But the knight would get the credit and the damsel and the gold, and all I get's the gift of growing old. I might have grown to be a miner, wooden knife of precious stone, and find a vein of diamond worth more than all of the town could hold. And then with all my charity, the light comes to prosperity. With my luck, I'd still end up in the cold. Cause you won't rewrite history to commemorate the likes of me. And you would not believe me if I tried to tell you all the things I've seen and all the places that I've been. So pour the whole another cup of wine. I might have grown to be a king more mighty than the kings you've known who led us through a peaceful time. Still be such a sight for sorest eyes, I'd be a pauper in disguise. I might have led the cavalry to glory on the battlefield, and they would cast a monument in silver of my weathered shield. But now, with all my metals torn, no truth except my silver tongue, tell of all the valor I have won. Cause you won't rewrite history to commemorate the likes of me, and you would not believe me if I tried. To tell you all the things I've seen and all the places that I've been, so pour the whole another cup of wine. I might have been a good man, I loved someone with all he had, I did right by the ones he'd known, and gave away the wealth of him, till the purse was empty, even so you would forget me, like a dying star I'd burn until I'm dark. Cause you won't rewrite history too. To commemorate the likes of me, and you would not believe me if I tried to tell you all the things I've seen and all the places that I've been. So pour the whole another cup of wine. So pour my friends another cup of wine. Thank you. Woo! Go windy. Yeah. That Yay. was drinking song by Housephone. They're brilliant. 